Hello everyone, this is Colossius. I am back with another game review video. Today we have an 11Q facing a 10Q in the D division. Uh, this is the second game I will be reviewing. Um, in today's game, we will have uh, two double digit Qs. So we really want to focus on what they're doing wrong to break into the, the um, single digit Q barrier. Now, what I find most often at this level is the fighting at double digit Q. So I think the fighting is definitely gonna be something you really are gonna have to work on. And we're gonna see if that is true or not. All right, so we're playing three, four, three, four, but, and so I said this in the last review as well, as white, you don't wanna give your opponent a free approach. On this board, it looks like you can mirror it and both players will get a free approach with support. But if it's mirrored, uh, who do I want to say it's good for? Actually, I actually don't know the answer to this. Um, mirror go is usually good for black, right? Because black's playing first and has the initiative. So I want to say this is good for black because mirrored situation should be good for black. So as white, I think it would be better to play this one, Black Mesa Shamari, and then we go into a normal opening. I think this would be more reasonable. All right, so black, a white isn't going to approach the bottom left. Ooh, here, high, low, high. If you're low here, go high. If you're high here, you can go low or go high, uh, high because you have support on both sides. Basically, this low wants to go up, but if there's a, if there's a white stone, then it goes down to the third line for safety. But if there's a black stone, you want to develop. So fourth line for develop. If you have a support on both sides, fourth line. Um, if there's a white stone over here, then you would want to go third line. So this is really flat. So white does approach, perfectly fine. Black plays a one space pincer because he think uh, he says the left side is bigger. Okay. Ooh, fancy Joseki. Do you guys know it? Oh. I think white studies Joseki. Does this, yeah? Okay, not bad, not bad. Uh, all right, cool result. Uh, you could also consider a pincer to get an extension from the 3 4 while also pincering this. Very nice. Uh, I think don't push if you're gonna if you're gonna to attack from here, because maybe you can peep and then come back later. So, if, for example, white jumps, maybe you can do this later. So there is this Aji. So save the Aji. So usually don't push unless you're gonna cut. This is very strange because it doesn't defend the three three. So what about here? and then it play an extension or you can just play an extension directly uh, an extension is a five space jump um so if you want to play on top i think it's going to be an extension if you want to attack black it would be here and then play an extension or maybe you can close the corner for territory if you want to play points um this i think is what i would expect something along these lines this is very strange all right, so black invades the top. It's reasonable. This is not good. Three, three still open. Large knights move on this side. Two space jump on this side. Now, you, I would prefer something like this because you already have a jump on one side. So now you need the enclosure on the other to kill the three, three. Because if you have a jump on both sides, even if it's a knight's move, this is still a co. There's still invasion Aji. It's still invadable. So it's not nearly as big as it looks. So I think this one... Um, this one's actually bigger locally, but I still don't like this shape because this is still Aji right here. And there's a lot of Aji in this area, which I really don't like. So I don't like this shape. So I think because if you wanted to enclose, I think it'd be here. If you want to deal with this Aji and attack, it would be here. And then you could do that. That way there should be nothing in here that you can't handle. Like you can see all the stones are working together very nicely. So I think a jump here would put the pressure on black and then you can come back and fix like that. 
Mm, very nice 3-3. Uh, this isn't a co. This is a large knight's move, not a small knight's move. So it would be here. If white goes here, then you're going to get your second eye. If white tries to fix, do, 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 do. you kill that um, here. And if white tries to go... Yeah, if white tries to go here, then you just make a second eye. So, yeah. You can, that's the it's the large nice move. Small knights is a co. Also, white missed the co. That's the co. Very nice. Honey. Bad liberties, but okay. All right. So black is. Clearly ahead because this right side and the top of corner get destroyed. White has no combination, so black's very far ahead. All right, so white starts living on the bottom to try and destroy that side. I think that's really good, but I think probably this game's almost decided already. Um, so I want to really think about why that is, and I think that's going to be the contact fighting. I think black is definitely better than white in the uh, reading and the fighting. And like I said, the fighting is the biggest thing at this level. But I want to say it's because white's shapes in the top left corner were just not good. The, the bottom left corner Joseki was very nicely played, the top right Joseki. But in a position, so maybe you haven't studied the star point Josekis. Uh, so maybe study those and learn the ins and outs of the 3-3 three, three invasions, uh, the touch invasions, the this shape, the diagonal shape, and the weakness here. These are all Jose Joseki knowledge, right? So you can actually study these by learning one or two Josekis at a time. So I think maybe study some star point Josekis and learn when to play them and which directions to play them. So direction to play with some star point Josekis. So I think play some star points, play some star point Josekis and learn more about that. Because I think that's why this uh, fell apart here. Um, but other Because you could have actually played a very large corner this way now granted black is playing faster because the right side is very nice um i think if you had played this way then something like this uh and then maybe reduce black while building up yours that might be a little bit more possible for white um so yeah I think getting the getting to the big move. So I think that's direction of play again. So a good rule of thumb is if you're if you're not sure what to do or how to fix your direction of play, just try and follow these steps. One, open corners. I think everyone knows this. And two, open sides. Open sides is the widest open side. Usually it has to be like eight or nine spaces wide to uh, be considered a big open side. Uh, but anything more, go for the usually the widest side. Um, and then you can play an enclosure, an extension, or an approach. Those are usually your three options on an open side. From there, after there's no more open sides, then you go for the largest framework. And now I think where many people mess this up is they only build up theirs. Their framework sometimes is the largest, excuse me, but sometimes it's not. So in this case, black had the larger framework. So white should have played the open side and then try to get Sente and go to the largest framework. So the right side was the largest framework and you can invade or reduce it. So, uh, so that would be good direction of play. So usually it's open corners, open sides, largest framework. If you can follow those three steps, I think that'll really help, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that'll really help uh, your beginning middle game. So I think it'll really help your direction of play. But other than that, I think the star point Josekis and the direction of play for white, I think, was the mistakes. Uh, black, you did uh, make a little bit of a mistake here, but you definitely solved it. You fixed it with good reading. So the reading was very nice here. So I think black is actually uh, quite strong uh, for an 11 cube because the reading is quite, quite good. And I think the reading is usually the biggest mistakes at the double digit Q level. Um... 
So I want to say, I want to say, let's see, I need a mistake for black, a uh, common thing for black. I think black, you're actually doing quite good. So keep fighting, keep uh, working on that, and keep working on the direction. Um, this is too much. I think white's a little scared now because you still have an eye right here as well. So white is actually already alive. So now would be a great time to go reduce. So I think maybe white doesn't know, uh, is afraid of reducing, I'm not sure. This is bad life and death. This is not Sente, and you definitely don't want to lose Sente. This is very large. Even if we play right here, it's okay. It's just them end game, right? It's just them end game. So I think this was all very gote. Mm -hmm. So black, try to get Sente more. You can even build up right here. But I think uh, if you want to keep that whole area, if you just play right here and seal the deal, pretty much win. So I think uh, this is about a good supplement. Don't play Tengen, guys. Tengen is a lie. Tengen is just a distraction. It's not. It's almost never the best move. Uh, so if you if you're thinking about playing Tengen, nine times out of ten it's wrong. <laughs> uh, because if you want to reduce, find the line of the Moyo. Line of the Moyo is like right here. So you got it would be like right here. That's the line of the Moyo. Okay. Tengen is Tengen's too soft. But why do we play Tengen? Because there's a dot there, and everyone loves playing in the center of the board. It's symmetrical. That's actually a common mistake. Don't play Tengen just for the sake of playing Tengen. Make sure it's actually on the line of the influence. Make sure it's actually the right move. Uh, don't play Tengen just because it's Tengen. Um, all right, so I think this is a good stopping point. Uh, I think after this, Black will probably keep his lead. Uh, just to double check. Mm-hmm. Well, I did try to invade, but it was too late, I think. Yeah, so Black kept his lead. White well, did work his way in very nicely, I think. Uh, the fighting in the center, I think, was very good. So maybe White outfought Black a little bit here, but Black definitely outfought White here. But I think that's that's a common exchange because you're close in level. But I think the bit more important stuff was Black got an... Was the game was almost over before, like, in, like, 70 moves. The game was almost over. And Black never really lost that lead. I think we really want to focus on the first, like, 100 moves or the first 50 moves. I think in double digit here, the first 50 moves are going to be the most important. Uh, White did try to invade, but don't invade the center. You want to invade, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to invade the side so you can have extensions. You do not want to invade the center. You want to invade, like, right here and then run away. Because if they try to surround you, now you have a jump. You don't want to play a move that doesn't have a jump in either direction. That's usually not good. So avoid the symmetrical type things. Symmetry is usually only good in like life and death, but not really in invasions and reductions. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to say that 100% of the time, of course. Um, that's not completely true. But I think the big lessons here is Black is, uh, did very well in fighting. But try to keep Sente more. So try to really watch uh, your Sente. Um, make sure you're keeping sent getting Sente more often. Uh, white, I think, improve the fighting. But that's that's everyone at this level. Um, the life and death for both players. Uh, I think both players need more life and death on the bottom. Because the bottom life and death wasn't uh, the greatest. Uh, the top left, I think White needs to study some star point just like he's. But other than that, I think it was... Um, I think it was a nice game. I think it was a those very nice Josekis. The bottom left I was very impressed by. Uh, Black's reading in the top left. So White's Josekis in the bottom left I was very impressed. The reading for Black in the top left and the right side uh, development I th was really impressed by. So I think both players definitely have their strengths. But now try to expand your knowledge. So for Black, try to keep Sente. For White, study more about star points. Uh, but hopefully you guys found that helpful. Hopefully you guys enjoy this view. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.